So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, our next speaker is, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm Jens Peterson. Okay, oh sorry, yeah, sorry. Jens Peterson. So yeah, please, you can start. my battery gone. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so, welcome to this talk about uh, human temperaments. Um, my name is Jens Peterson. Um, I, this is a non-technical non talk, and so anyway. Um, about 10, 15 years ago, I read this lecture by Rudolf Steiner about the four temperaments and became rather fascinated in this topic and I think I feel it's helped me a lot in understanding different types of people and uh, yeah just well it helped me to understand people better so I wanted to share a bit about it here at FOSS Asia and I hope that it might help some of you um, so let's see so Let's talk a little bit about types first of all, personality types, not, not uh, software types. Um, so probably the most obvious type is the, um, the gender type or the sex type, ma male, female. And, but obviously this is far too coarse to really understand people. So psychologists have, I guess, have developed lots of other types. Some very, well, many, some are very complicated ones, the things like Enneagrams or other much more complex classifications, but the temperament is rather simple. Um, it's, there are only basically four, four types. Um, and of course, it's important to understand uh, from the beginning that th this is not like a completely black and white thing, and that everyone has some of the old, all the temperaments, but basically, usually one type of temperament is dominant in, in people, in a particular person, so. Um, and then sometimes personality types are kind of composed of different factors. So um, one factor might be um, things like active or passive, or, or, very, or more common maybe is introvert, um, extrovert, um, kind of uh, polarity. Um, another, well, we'll come to this in a moment, but another one is about, well, about, in, about the interest in tasks or people. Um, so anyway, I, I thought we'd do a very simple exercise. Uh, so maybe if you could all stand up, um, and if that's okay, if you could all stand up and kind of come slightly more into the center of the room, because I want to use the sides of the rooms a little bit. So, um, so. I know th this is all a bit subjective, and, and sometimes these factors also depend on context and so on. But the idea is, if you're a, if you think you're an extrovert, and come to the front of the room. If you're more of an introvert, go to the back of the room. If that, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. <laughs> Everyone's going to the back. <laughs> well, not everyone, but all right. Uh, so you can come more forward if you want. Um, okay. And then I want to do a second split within this splitting. Um, so again, this is a bit contextual, but if you think you're more of a people-oriented person, go to the right side of the room. If you're more of a task-oriented person, sort of likes to solve, to sort of fix things, and go to the left side of the room. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Well, I need more input for this one. Right, sorry. It's, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it'll become clearer. I don't know whether we have time to do this a second time later, but um, anyway, it's not so serious. It's just, it's just interesting to see how things spread out. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, you could probably sit down again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah, it all comes out now. So, yeah, so <laughs> I actually let you stand up. But so, so here we have these basically two factors in action here. So there's the sort of introvert, extrovert on this axis, and then the 
for the task people orientation horizontally. Um, so now, yeah, how does this relate to temperament? Um, so I think this this split kind of roughly corresponds to temperament. So basically, in these psychological factors. Um, but before talking a bit more, I just want: does anyone ha know any any the names of any of the temperaments before we get more into them? Anyone? Sorry. Ah, oh, no, they're different. Actually, they're a bit different. Anyway, so someone had some. Oh yes, choleric, yes, that's right, that's what, sanguine, yes, that's right. Any, any more ideas? Metabolic. Yes. Metabolic. Yes, perfect, correct, well, well done. So these are all, well, these are all each represented in this little thing I stole off the internet somewhere, but I'm not sure I'm even allowed to show it, but anyway. Um, so, I'm using colors here to also kind of label the different uh, temperaments um, and they're positioned in this kind of order well, so basically um, let's see if I have okay I should have put them both but um, okay so yeah, there's melancholic, uh, phlegmatic, sanguine and choleric and I'm using red for choleric, yellow for sanguine, green for phlegmatic and melancholic in, in blue. Um, okay. And I probably should have superimposed them on the next slide too, but so, th so basically th this extrovert, the split we just did sort of co correspond is this way, but the actual diagonal, the, the attempt to live on the diagonals, if you like. So the, the factor is it's kind of bin well, it's not completely binary, but it's a roughly binary in the sense that yeah, living those four kind of uh, colors or types there. Um, okay, so I've got various slides to explain more about. Um, okay, I'm going to just jump through them. So. So, so these, these temperaments have various kind of characteristics. For example, um, maybe melancholic tends to be kind of more serious, uh, internally focused. Maybe kind of sometimes we call shy, or um, they understand maybe suffering, or maybe they're more kind of um, yeah, understanding of suffering. And whereas the phlegmatic. Um, tends to be, well, maybe quite quiet, but um, more people-oriented, maybe a bit more friendly in some sense, or concerned about people. And then the uh, sanguine is a rather lively um, type, very social, likes to I mean, interact with people very much. And then the choleric is rather more uh, determined, a bit forceful, action-oriented, um, um, yeah. So, also, Steiner talks about this, but, so, this, well, so the, the, the interesting part, thing about this chart is that this, that the, the phlegmatic is kind of left out of this, so, I'm not, yeah, phlegmatic, so, these two type, these two temperaments are kind of internally active, meaning they're more active, well, active sort of externally, whereas, um, but the choleric is also internally active like the melancholic. The melancholic is only basically internally active, whereas the choleric is both internally and externally active, whereas the sanguine is basically purely externally active, well, purely, yeah. It's almost like sanguine things just sort of bounce off them. They don't really process them that much. They kind of naturally just kind of react or respond to things. Um, some more characteristics. Um, so, some of my colleagues may have more sort of rich inner life 
um, phlegmatics are maybe not so easily stimulated they need maybe to be pushed a bit or um, sanguines tend to sort of have quite short attention spans they get interested in something then they get interested in something else and so, so I mean these are sort of pros and cons and they have in some sense maybe more weaknesses in some sense and, and cholerics can often get a bit hot tempered or excited about things um, easily so and St Stein also talks about this in, in the context of education and so on how teachers can sort of work with children and so on to kind of try to because I mean the problem is that th these things can get kind of uh, extreme so if the, the temperaments actually the I ideal place to be is actually here in the middle in a sense but that's kind of not well very difficult because we each have these temperaments that we kind of were born with so but still one can do things to kind of reduce to, to avoid getting kind of in a um, well kind of uh, extreme cases of these things um, another well this maybe gets a bit controversial but another very interesting aspect is that actually the temperament affects appearance of people um, so melancholics are often I mean these are again trends it's obviously not an absolute thing but um, melancholics tend to be sort of a bit tall, thin, lanky um, phlegmatics maybe a bit more chubby um, um, sanguine tend to have a larger feature features maybe females often have so sort of long fine straight hair um, and cholerics tend to be a little short maybe they often get bald well yeah and or males anyway and uh, I'll move on um, so th this is a little story or a little verse I had to say so so the, the poor temperament basically run into an obstacle or a wall or sort of a large collection of stones and so on and then so the melan melancholic sort of breaks down and crying and gives up in sort of despair and just sort of sits in front of the obstacle the, the phlegmatic takes a detour just, just sort of flows around the um, just around <coughs> it the sanguine just sort of lightly jumps over the, the wall of the stones and, and proceeds happily and the choleric basically just sort of kicks down the stones and laughs happily and uh, moves on so, so, so quite different kinds of reactions to well problems then I want to turn a little bit to the disc profile um, which is completely independently well invented or discovered or um, psychological um, personality types um, and that's basically it can this, this can be well this is an instrument used um, I think even well it's also used I think a lot in industry and so on when, when just um, basically you, just, you can take an online questionnaire it's basically just various situational so multiple choice questions like in this situation would you do this or this or this and, and after about 30, 40, 50 questions then it will give you sort of charts or like which is the dominant um, type and they have different or well, different names from the uh, temperaments but basically they, they correspond exactly with the temperaments the names are a little bit um, some different places have slightly different names but um, but, but, but they're all D-I-S-C uh, which is where the disc comes from so, so they call this red type dominant and I think that this has different names some um, in interactive, interpersonal, influential, or this um, as a steady and the conscientious I think um, so it's quite interesting that this um, sort of psychological type 
which corresponds exactly with the temperament. Um, and they talk about, I think one thing, new thing they brought the, the discs people is the sort of fundamental question for these different types. So melancholics really want to know, so when you're about to say do something, melancholics really want to know why you're going to do something. And the phlegmatic really wants to know how to do it. Uh, the sanguine wants to know who's going to do it or help, help, I mean, which people are be involved. And the choleric is basically concerned with what, sort of the, or the outcome. Um, then back to temperaments again, a few more details. So there's also a kind of correspondence with the uh, classical elements, the earth, water, air and fire. Um, like before I said how the phlegmatic just sort of flows around the, the obstacle, um, a bit like water. Um, whereas the sanguine sort of just floats over. Um, so that's also quite interesting. Um, and these colors are always also relate to that. Um, I may skip over this for a but, um, but the turbulence of the phlegmatic is probably related to the strong kind of life force and glands in the uh, that they tend to have. So, um, okay, I'll finish off a little bit talking about polarities. So, so I mean the first step is kind of to understand the temperaments themselves, but then a further step is the interactions or well, inter and interactions between these. Um, which is a bit more complicated. Um, but I mean, one, one of the reasons, like, like say, why the disc people, disc training, is to try to understand how to, to handle, deal with people, say, in the workspace or other, well, other contexts. Um, but basically, there are kind of attractions or polarities between diagonally across here. So the melancholics and sanguines are kind of attracted to each other. Um, and similarly, the choleric and phlegmatic is also kind of polarity between these types. So, um, so this is quite interesting in the sense of kind of compatibility. Um, yeah, I don't have much more to say actually. Um, but I've, I've found that these temperaments really helped me a lot um, in, in various people relationships, in both at home, at work, friends, um, and it's after a while I, I, I it kind of can predict the temperaments when meeting people, <coughs> partly from the appearance or how they and how they kind of react in various situations and so on and. And based on that, then I, it, one has a better idea about how to kind of interact with them rather than just kind of um, um, doing things in a different way, maybe. So, yeah, that is um, basically most of what I wanted to say. So I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments. Or Yes. Do you try to classify people into teams and do you keep it to yourself or do you let it? Uh, right. So actually we had some disc training in Red Hat and so we were spread, but at least some people did um, when I was in Australia anyway. And we were kind of there, the disc profiles and stuff um, like, but I haven't really used, I haven't really shared it very, I am not openly in that sense, but I, yeah, maybe I, I should, but uh, um, that's an interesting question, yeah. I mean, 
I guess there's one problem with this kind of stuff is some people react to it in a kind of negative way, like it's being pigeonholing or so on, and and also that another yeah another, another aspect which is more clear from disc is that there are kind of secondary, so there's a primary primary temperament or uh, main temperament, and then a disc at least there are sort of secondary type which so that they can actually have slants, so someone can be choleric but more melancholic or they can be choleric and a bit more sanguine say or even potentially they can be <laughs> choleric and then but I think that's less un less usual but secondary um, phlegmatic but um, yeah have you ever found people who change maybe in the course of the day or in the course of the lifetime well yeah so that's another thing I think um, the Tarat certainly influences, like, I think some people might be somewhat different, say, in the work or at home. And so I think co the kind of s context or space or that they're in does have an, does have an effect. It's, it's quite an interesting question. Um, I, yeah, so I, I think it's quite interesting to, to think more about why and how that, that, that takes place, but yeah. Um, I still think the overall temperament maybe is. I mean, I think some people might like in a workspace, like someone like. So I, okay, <laughs> I'm actually a, a, a melancholic, but I think my disc profile is slightly more tending towards choleric, maybe in, because well, maybe because I'm a manager or something. I don't know. Certainly. Um, so I, I think when you're answering, say, for example, when you're doing the disc profile and answering the questions, you might have the the context you're thinking. The questions in also impacts the result, I think, in some ways. So, so it's yeah, it's a very good question. Right? Yeah. What is the distribution of this temperament among? Ah, that's <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> also a good question. Um, I, yeah, well, I mean, okay. I don't have any numbers. Um, I can only really guess, but but right. <laughs> I mean, we could try again if you want. I think we're running out of time, but uh. yeah. Mm. But I think there's a quite a good spread. Um, but yeah, it's true. I mean, in a particular profession, there might be like in something like a sales people, they might be more sanguine or might be over here more people oriented. Whereas, um, um, well, people who are might be more task oriented. So there might be a slight slant to one side or. But, but overall, I, I don't think it's very extreme. I mean, they might, but yeah, this, I, I could imagine that I could, I could make it. So it's a good, yeah, very interesting question too. It would be nice, interesting to have such numbers. <laughs> yeah. um, as an engineering manager, do you feel that um, bosses are kind of biased towards certain kinds of personalities? Well, um, Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I personally I sometimes find it easier sometimes to interact with certain types, and, and again, I, it also depends maybe what 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 say what a particular project is about. Someone person might be more suited. Say like someone who's more people oriented might be more interested in doing some kind of community related work whereas someone who's very task focused might be good at getting results in some project and <laughs> temperaments or these types and contexts of who might be the best person to do a job and so on so it's, yeah I think it's a good good point yes what's the relationship between temperament and personality um well, yeah, personality. Okay, so personality's got a broad thing. So, but I, I, 
I think that temperaments are maybe more more fundamental than personality in some sense. They're kind of inborn traits. So, with personality a bit broader and maybe a bit more fluid than temperament in some ways, I think. Mm. But yeah, it's not easy to give a very precise answer. So. Mm. Or nurture, or is it like uh, what? Uh, uh, Sorry, could you ask again? So yeah, is it? Uh, I mean, is it like uh, innate or uh, something ah. developed with time? Oh, I think it's innate. So it's yeah. I think basically temperaments are kind of acquired at, at birth. Um, I think, and sometimes they're kind of part of our individual uniqueness. I think so. Um, and they're kind of not really genetic, so I don't think they were inherited from um, so much from our parents. I mean, if you, I don't know, if you look at people in, in family and so on, they, the temperaments aren't necessarily related to the... It's not like you get two, two I don't know, I say two parents and then you get the same temperament for the children or something. It's not so simple as that, I think. So. It's yeah. That's a very good question. I think I'm running out of time. Have you seen any matching dominoes on the spectrum of these orbits? Oh. Mm, that's very complicated. Um, that's I mean, there are some psychological. If these things get out of order, then there are sort of various sort of tendencies that Steiner talks about. But um, maybe we could talk after. I think I'm out of time. But, uh, so thank you very much for the question. It's, it's very interesting too. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm happy to talk more. Um, yeah. But uh, in my, uh, I have seen uh, the temperaments being back to uh, like Kiersey's temperaments. To which which temperaments? Uh, Kiersey's uh, 16th temperaments. Okay, and, right. Uh, to MBTI as well. Uh, in my company, I yeah, okay. did the MBTI. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do find that most of the engineers have to be more to work, right? Okay. could imagine that um, um, I mean there should be some kind of mappings I suppose uh, um, I think the MBTI types are rather more sophisticated or more detailed so but they, I guess they, some of them should fall within certain temperaments I suppose I, I'm not so familiar with them I have read a little bit about them but I'm not really expert on those types but it's it's, it's a good point. Mm. But yeah, I think it's quite an interesting topic how these different personality type systems kind of relate to each other and so on. Like, I think gen so, so I guess they're kind of slightly different ways of slicing things and maybe there could be various overlaps and so on. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.